YouTube, we're here again tonight with the Viper uh, 70mm EDF, which is a 1.1 meter uh, jet. It's got Safe Select and AS3X, and it's really nice looking. I've uh, been working a good part of the night on getting these batteries ready to go, and they're charging. I built some adapters, and you'll see that they've got this different type of connector. And then they actually have, I built these adapters, so there'll be a video series for, for that, as well as inside of the cockpit here. Um, when you release the hood, you can pull this out. It's got a little release here. Um, I redid the EC5, and I put on a Hextronix 4mm uh, bolt connector style. It's called an HXT4. And we've got... The male and female combo and what we're going to do is just go ahead and get the assembly done this plane looks to be fairly easy to put together and so what i'm going to do is as usual i go through the manual i just make sure that i know kind of what section of it i'm looking at there's multiple languages on these things so they look they look huge but they're really not that big um, and since there's only five pieces to this kit i figured it should be a fairly easy thing to get done we got some good weather we're going to be running into tomorrow so i want to have it done so basically the model instructions call for the horizontal stabilizer first to go on uh, notice there are two servos they're both listed as elevator it doesn't matter which way you plug those in when you do plug them in but basically they say to i'm going to grab some forceps these bent tip forceps. I believe I added that to my regular list of things. Okay, so this one's for the rudder. And this one is for something else. Okay, this one's for the elevator. Okay, so there's only one connector in the bag of goodies, and that's the bind plug and then a bunch of screws are all exactly the same, which is super nice. So that means they must have a Y cable inside the body already. I believe it's a 530 or 564th. Uh, oh, there it is. You guys see it now? So I'm just gonna grab and pull that out. Yep, two elevator plugs here. Um, looks like those could come off in transit possibly, so you'll wanna be careful about that. So basically they're suggesting that you uh, screw this on, but you're going to have to connect this first. Uh, it doesn't matter which, which one goes to which, but you just need to make sure the brown goes to brown. You want to show them the brown going to the brown, please. <laughs> See the colors? They're keyed, so it's really pretty easy to do this. Um, and when I say keyed, if you try to plug them in the wrong way, uh, you'll have a really hard time getting them. You will eventually get them, but you'll just damage a bunch of stuff. So one thing too I've learned is to have a hot glue gun hot, and then you can just uh, put a little teeny bit on the side that connects. And yes, you'll, you'll add a little teeny bit of weight to your project, but it's just, it's, first of all, it's barely any weight. And then the second thing is you can tidy up your wires as you go. Um, which is nice. So I usually like to do that. Mostly what I'm concerned about is keeping these things from breaking free under high vibration. Um, but the truth of the matter is if they're breaking free, there's a good chance they broke free because a control surface got ripped off. So then you screwed anyway. <laughs> so these are glued together. They really have like a super oily residue, so the glue's not wanting to stick very good on them. But they are holding them in, so we're fine with that. Um, obviously, we're going to have a rudder to go up next. And so you'll notice that there's room here for the wires to be passed through. I had to set mine back down into the channel here. Not a big deal. So I'm going to do that. And then these wires, of course, when we're done, we're going to open the canopy and pull the slack up to the front. Very well 
manufactured. I mean, there's only one way that goes, and that immediately holds the tail into position. So really pleased with that. Didn't have to do much to get that to work. So now we just have to grab some screws. Looks like we're gonna need a total of two screws on the back, and then the rest are gonna go through the top of the vertical stabilizer. So we'll just stick those in. There's a plastic backer, that's how you can tell. You don't wanna drop them up here. And like I said, this is uh, 564 is what I'm using, 564 of an inch. Which is strange that I'm noticing this new trend of not sending the Allen wrench with these Allen screws. I guess they don't send a Phillips screwdriver with all the screws, well, except in, unless it's Some Chinese are, model. Yeah, then they do. No torque specs, but you can tell because you'll start to get a pucker in the foam. And that's your telltale sign that you've got, you've gone way, way, way too far. But I usually go for that little bit of pucker. I'd rather have a little pucker than have the wing come off. Okay, then the vertical stabilizer. Super detailed, obviously you got the servo off to the one side. Go ahead and plug this in first. It says rudder, verify it says rudder. Make sure that the color um, agrees as you plug this in so that the brown goes to the brown and the orange goes to the orange. It should be uh, pretty simple on the scale of rocket science <laughs> and brain surgery. It's a little bit of both. Okay, so we're good there. Now this one we're gonna have to have the wires pulled forward in order to keep everything where it needs to be. So I'm just gonna reach up into this cavity and uh, again, like we were talking about the brain surgery here just a second ago. So we're just going to grab the uh, wires here. Just looking for the three particular ones. You don't want to yank on the, the ESC wire. Of course, that'd be kind of a slobby mess. Okay, so we'll just pull those in neatly. And look at that, guys. Pulling on that did disconnect both elevator plugs. So, let's learn from Brian's mistake and not have that happen to you. See this? Wow. That's crazy. I don't know if they'll see that. Oh, maybe they can. Yeah, they yep. both came unplugged. Yep. I am very surprised by that. Like I said, these things are really slick. They're just not wanting to take that glue. Um, if you ever get one of these connectors that's really working poorly, there's a trick I can show you. With an X-Acto knife, Not depending on glue. Watch this. We're gonna try to get a good close shot of this. You see this little tab? You can take this tab and uh, pull up or push down depending on what you're trying to do, tightening or loosening. So I'm gonna push down on that. That and that. Now watch this. I either loosen that or I tighten it. <laughs> One or the other. Okay, so it feels like we're getting pretty good purchase there. So now I'm just going to go a little bit heavier on the glue. And I'm going to actually wrap the sides and the back because I do not want that thing getting unplugged as a result of insulation. That would be very unfortunate. And I'm going to probably go ahead and do the same thing with the rudder. I'm basically just... Uh, gluing both sides of it because then there's just more contact area you could also use ca if you wanted to save a little bit on weight um, this one came undone as well just go get a little hot glue there i'm actually going to push that in a little bit more yet there you go that one did feel like it had a little better purchase on it so In the back side. I had somebody just saying the other day that they thought this was kind of overkill and normally I would say it's a little overkill too but evidently on this model it's not overkill so now the only thing about 
that hot glue is that it just happens to be close to the ESC. The ESC is up here, and then you're kind of in a void back here. So you should be okay. So I'm just going to try to very carefully control those three cables. The two that are in question are the elevator right now. Those are the ones that came undone. And then the rudder we're just going to tuck down like that. I think we're okay now. That was uh, strangely more involved than I figured it would be. Weird. <laughs> I'm shocked. So then this, I think I have some crap in the way of where that's supposed to go down so I'm not able to get it to sit down. So I'm going to flatten those two servo cables on top of each other. And that seems like maybe I've got enough room now. Can you tell? It looks... It looks like I'm not going in far enough. Just a little tiny gap. I'm going to try to see if I can get those to push out of the way. And out of the way. I guess we'll see if I can get that to go down in there. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. He's got to finish hard. Yep. Okay, then there's three screws on this one. It shows that clearly in the instruction manual. So we got two and three. Sorry guys, that was harder than I figured it would go. See now if I inadvertently grab the wires up here and pulled on it, then I wouldn't accidentally unhook my elevator or worse yet, half my elevator. Because uh, as you know, that would act as a telebond then and it would induce a roll, a pretty severe roll. What's kind of cool about this setup is if you don't like the way it flies, if you don't like the way the elevator configuration flies, you could do a delta um, mixture, do like a V-tail or delta wing setup. And then you could mix in so you have basically aileron action on the elevator and on the ailerons. And then mix uh, elevator into just the elevator side of things. Although that's going to screw up your AS3X and say, so it saves the life. So only do that if you really care, and I don't think you will. This thing is going to fly good, I, I firmly believe it. Every one of my Horizon hobby planes tends to fly good. Or at least better than average for that particular style of plane. Okay, so these screws are a little bit harder to get to. Just because the control surface is making it a little bit tricky to use this tool. So if you had like a, a driver instead of a, an Allen wrench, like an L-shaped Allen wrench, that would be kind of handy on this application. Just want to see how much. I mean, that's super stiff, super rigid. Okay, good. All right, great. So I'm going to move these tools back out of the way so I don't accidentally roll into the knife. The next step is going to be pretty obvious. It's going to put the wing on. Yep, put the wing on, in fact. And uh, obviously, the only thing we got to watch out for when we're putting on the wing is that we get all the wires situated in such a way that they can pass through. And as you can see on this wing, I've got, uh, I've got these couple of Y cables where they come together here. So I'm going to depress those together real quick. And then I'm going to just put a little bit of glue. And you're probably thinking to yourself, no, not before you pass it through. Yeah, that could be a problem, but I just mostly don't want them to come undone. Because that would kind of suck. I can't even really get to the other half of this, so I'm hoping that's where it plugs in. Okay, cool. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky because... You want to have something to kind of hold this, so I'm going to get a blanket ready, and we'll do that real quick. Okay. Okay, so we've got it 
um, resting on a secure blanket. <laughs> and we're just going to tuck all these wires down this one little hole, which is going to be easier said than done, I think. These are always the steps they show in the diagrams, and you're like, hmm, <laughs> is it really going to be that easy? No. So basically, I may have to flip this over and negotiate a larger opening. Because there's just a lot of wires going on right at that spot. Good lord. What a freaking mess. Um, guys, look at this. Can you show them what I'm showing, what I'm seeing, please? Do you see this? I'm having to pull all this crap out of the way to get to that, so you wanna, you're gonna wanna negotiate that before you flip it over. And then, once you've got it flipped over, you can try to feed those wires through. I do have a better chance of getting them out now. I'm just wondering if it might be easier to feed the wires down and then pull them back up through doesn't really say on the diagram what's easier. See, because if you, if you feed them through first, then you can guide the whole bundle back. But look at that mess. I don't know. I'm just not sure that's going to work either. And by the way, do you notice my AR636 is not quite totally square? See, it's at an angle. I've seen that before. I hope that doesn't cause me a problem. Because it's definitely not totally straight. It's off to a... It's off like this. Slightly. Makes me a little nervous. Well, I guess we're going to try this. Not a whole lot we can do about it. Just use my pinky to open that up a little bit. And give it a good old college try. They're definitely going down in there. Don't get me wrong, it's just I'm afraid they're going to all get bound up in that opening. Can I help you? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I have it in there loose. Now I have to get the four steps back. I'm going to try to pull these wires up. What a freaking mess. Look at this. That's crazy. Careful. I know. I see it goes on. What a mess. Well, everything appears to be poking up through. I guess we'll try to force it down like we did on the horizontal and vertical stabilizer there. I just hate forcing the issue on a, a plane that's made of foam. You see what I'm talking about mm -hmm. there? Like there's what appears to be some sort of a spongy behavior going on with one of these Yeah, you just put it in straight too. It's not like you have to key it in like a lot of the Horizon Hobby wings. Hmm. I guess I'm gonna go ahead and start tightening these. Hope I don't cause myself some trouble. But maybe it just needs to be pulled in tighter. Let's start with this front one and then I'll do the back corner. Once I get this started, we'll go ahead and pause it because it's just me tightening screws. You ready to pause? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, we've got all those six screws, one, two, three, four, five, six. And now that's on there, solid. Um, now what we're left with is basically a giant wire bundle to have to situate. And... Uh, that's going to be the, the next thing I have to work out is getting this bundle 
plug together. But as you can see, my bag is empty. And so all that's left is the bind plug. So the next thing they're talking about is how to wire it up. Throttle is one, two is aileron, three is elevator, four is uh, rudder slash nose wheel, five is retracts, and six is flaps. So not that I think you have to worry about that because in this case there are actually little uh, jumpers plugged in here. Okay, so this must be like the nose wheel up here, I'm guessing, since it's already got one plugged in on this side. I'm just going to go ahead and get a little bit of glue on that. Oops. Kind of got excited there. Um, okay, so that's one. So then there's another one somewhere coming off of that on a Y cable. Not 100% sure exactly how to identify where that's going to be though. Just don't want that glue to get stuck to anything else. Okay, I see that. That's going to the nose gear. And then all this is coming in from somewhere else. What a mess. What a total and complete mess. Guys, look at this. This is the type of plane where when you're done, you're like, oh man, I have no clue where the wires go. Looks like that's probably the ESC. I can see where it's plugged into the throttle. Then there's a bind plug that's in here somewhere. Oh, what a mess. There's aileron. There's aileron. So if I can, okay, here's gear. Okay, here's gear, and there's a sticker that says gear, oh that's the Y cable for gear, guys this is just ridiculous, I sort of hate to waste your time with it, but I know it's kind of like half the battle is wiring these things up, well at this point you're you're following a label that says gear and you're plugging it in to one that says gear so it's not exactly hard um, and then like this antenna I honestly don't know why they don't have this resolved yet because they could stick that underneath the, the wood frame and I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slip that under the wood frame Super awkward. And this is a plug and fly. See, that's the thing, guys. If you get a bind and fly, or excuse me, this is a bind and fly. If you get a plug and fly, then you've got to do all the wiring. But I hate it when I get a bind and fly that's got so much halfway done work, you know? Because then I'm stuck doing doing that part of it. And yeah, there's a certain amount of, it's nice to know that you've got it done to your own standards and all that, but. Okay, so this, this goes up to the nose gear, obviously. So I'm actually gonna resituate that. I just don't, I don't understand why they have so much length on some of these and so little length on others. Um, that's another, unfortunately, all too common thing in the RC world. And that one that I glued on already, that one needs to basically undo so I can untangle it. I don't know if maybe we should just pause it here while I fight this. Okay. All right guys, so the trick I figured out to doing this is to basically pair off one at a time, one pair at a time of wires and what that's going to do is that's going to basically mitigate the disastrous wiring 
down to one pair at a time and eventually you end up with this like pseudo neat bundle um, and then there appears to be an extra one which I'm assuming is our bind plug so when we get ready to bind we can we can use that to get into bind mode and so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and um, we're not gonna do the full radio setup but we'll just do like the initial setup so that we can uh, get it get it bound <clears throat> and we'll bind it with the uh, safe select so let's uh, why don't you come around here and we'll just once we've established that everything is working then we'll go ahead and get this buttoned up and then we can go ahead and switch over to the radio setup so turn the radio on make sure your throttle cuts on as a matter of habit okay scroll down to system setup that disconnects your RF model select scroll all the way down add new model create and I'm going to show you what it says on the thing this is what they're recommending for a DX18 system setup type airplane airplane mode one aileron one flap okay so we're gonna do that which we already knew that anyway um, model type is an aircraft I always like to make sure the name so it's acro it's number 60 so we know we're not overriding something so basically here's where we would type in the Viper and we'll pause it while we're scrolling okay so we got Viper 1.1 meter in here as a name then we'll go back aircraft type we've already got got to set up one aileron one flap whoops and then we'll go to next we'll change the color the picture to I think that might be the closest one to a jet that we have Oh, there we go. That's pretty good. That looks like the Habu. We'll do that. Um, channel assign auxiliary two is by default set to E. I'm gonna want that to be set to, to D. So I'll just go ahead and set that now. Um, I don't know what flaps are going to be set to. Yeah, flaps. Okay. So when we walk back out of the menu. We're in Viper, five minute timer. On this paperwork, it suggests. I'm going to move this tool out of here because we're done with that. Um, I guess we could kind of do this right now because it's just all going to mix into one. Flight timer setting is four minutes on the recommended battery. And so the recommended battery is 3,800 milliamps, 30C6S. And I'm running a 4,000 milliamp. So they're recommending 3,300 through 3,800. So we could probably get a little bit more than four minutes, but we're going to set it to four minutes. And then we'll adjust accordingly. Timer, four minutes. We're not going to inhibit. We want tone and vibrate. Okay. And then uh, throttle cut. We're going to set to D or H. We do not want negative 130. That just screws stuff up. Unless you're running a nitro plane or like a gas plane. So test it. Make sure throttle's not moving. Throttle goes up. Throttle's free. Throttle's off. Okay, so we're good there. And then flap system will turn that on to this switch. I always use B. And then what do they recommend for flaps? They don't say there, they say it over here. So on DX18, flap system is minus 100, minus 45, and then plus 50 with a two second delay speed. And we always start from the factory settings and then we adjust accordingly. Uh, so negative 100. negative 100 then we want negative 45 
Okay, and then we want plus 50. Okay, and then they're not showing any elevator adjustment at all. So the servo setup, we need to reverse the gear setting. So servo setup, travel, sub trim, reverse. We'll go to gear, we'll reverse it. And what else? Looks like that's pretty much it. So then we just need to decide if we're gonna switch D at some point when we do our assignment for safe select. Clear the timer, check the one out's working. It is, throttle cuts on, clear. And you can also go over to monitor from here and you can see like if your flaps are doing what you want, make sure all your control surfaces are the way you want. Okay, so for now, we're gonna go ahead and get ready to do the bind sequence. Now, the binding sequence is a little bit different. I love how they have this addendum. It's nice to have that. What's a little bit annoying is that they don't talk about the safe select on that same page. And look at this. Our chargers is just getting done. Perfect, literal perfect timing. <laughs> um, okay, so let's show the people this picture. The okay. center of gravity is 75 to 85 millimeters back. We're not even gonna mess with that yet because we don't have the battery in there. But when it's 75 to 85 millimeters back, that's a pretty big range, just 10 millimeter range. So I'm not real excited about that. Okay, so let's show them this too. We don't wanna disconnect that yet, I guess. So this is basically, if you want safe on or switching off safe select, you can shut off safe select so it never, never operates. And um, that's how you do it. You install the bind plug and you do it like normal. If you want it to be switching on and off based on the assignment that you make by doing this process on this addendum, then you basically plug in the switch or the, the, the plug to the bind plug adapt, uh, extension cord in this case, I believe is what it is. Then you have your transmitter off. Okay, so we're gonna do it that way. So we'll go ahead and plug this in. That shorts the ground to the signal, okay? So I'm stopping my charger, unplugging my battery, unplugging the other lead. Now, when you're dealing with 6S packs, this is the adapter I built. It goes to XT60, and then basically you've got the opposite pin set. I show you how I made these on a video later this week. You'll be able to see. Uh, I think it should be publishing after this. I'm not sure which way I did it actually now that I think about it. So all I need to do is just, they've got a Velcro pad in here right now. I'm not sure how I wanna handle it. I, I'm not a huge fan of Velcro. I just find more trouble from Velcro than anything else. So I'm actually gonna lay this aside um, and I'll put it onto some plastic, use it again. But for this testing purpose, I'm gonna just basically get this so that I can slip this in here to kind of test the CG and stuff. And then we'll go ahead and bind it. So, so much for a separate video for radio setup. <laughs> okay, so we'll slip that out most of the way. And one thing I've found is that every time I have a jet of any kind, it's always a lot harder to get batteries in because the batteries are bigger and they're proportionately larger to the plane. Okay, so as you can tell, that makes it tip quite a bit. Okay, so we're plugged in, throttle cuts on, powers down, switches and conditions are the way we want it for fail safe. So now we're gonna go ahead, we got bind plugged in, we are off, battery is ready to plug in. And do you wanna show the people inside of here, please? Okay. So I'm gonna plug this in, watch for the spark. See the spark? See the flashing? That means we're ready. It just keeps beeping forever. Pull out the bind switch or bind plug. Then hold down your bind switch. Make sure you're a meter away and then turn on your power with the correct model of, uh, selected. Binding, bind failed. Okay, so we have to start again. That's definitely the bind plug though, guys. Okay, so the reason we had to do it that way was just because of the safe select. So the bind plug's in, transmitter's totally off. 
Now we can uh, plug this back in. Jeez. Almost oh, that time. It's a big spark. Yeah. Okay, now we pull this out. Hold down the bind, bind plug. See if you can take a shot so you can see both at the same time. Can you? Mm -hmm. Come over here, hon. Right here. Okay. Yep, I can see the light. Binding. DSMX 22 milliseconds telemetry. Okay, so now I can let go. It is bound. It's initiated. Okay, elevator up, down. Rudder left, right. Aileron left, right. Uh, I don't want to do flaps yet, but I do want to test gear. We should be done with the bind plug for now, so we can put that aside. We need to do an assignment for safe select as well. So while we're kind of in this situation that we're in, I would like to put the gear down, then we'll assign safe select so we have it in the true home position. Check for your gear, make sure you know where they're gonna come out. Toggle the gear once. Geez, that's a long throw. Okay. Not very much gear movement. Okay, elevator, ailerons, flaps. Oh yeah. Can you get him a nice low shot, hon? This way. Oh yeah. Very cool. And then basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna assign our safe select by following this instruction. Okay? We've already made an assignment. Let's look at it here on our screen. Auxiliary two is assigned to D, okay? So we know that that's gonna work. If you don't assign the correct switch, you have to figure out what switch is running aux two or aux three, okay? And then the sticks follow this. Sticks in, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do you hear it dance? Mm-hmm. Okay, so it danced. So now safe is either on or off, contingent on this switch, okay? So right now safe is on, and the way you can tell is just careful to sec secure your battery. See, get to the halfway, safe is on, safe is off, the S3X only is on, okay? So what we can learn from that is if you watch the video from the other day, this is when safe is off and I wanna switch that. So I'm gonna go into my servo setup at this point. You don't have to redo it, you just have to reverse it. Auxiliary two is reversed. Now safe would be on and safe is off. Okay, the other thing you can look for for safe being on is that you'll see the elevator will be attempting to level the craft and then depending on how your yaw, the rudder would be involved, okay? Whereas with safe off, it's only gonna be AS3X, so you hear the jitters, but you're not gonna see it. These are digital servos, they make a different noise uh, than a regular servo. They just kinda have that weird, like, uh, frequency where they seem to sing a song together. It's kinda interesting. Okay, so we're gonna test the throttle real quick. Throttle cuts off. <coughs> actually have power, but that thing has power. Let's give them a shot of the, the thing running. Throttle cuts off. <laughs> Throttle cuts off. <laughs> okay, so we've established that we have all the settings correct. Um, so that means we can tuck all this wiring away, but let's look at one more setting real quick. And let's look at what the manual says for Expo and dual rates. And then I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do, okay? We're not using a, a DX6 and DX6E, okay? So, they don't talk about, okay, dual rates are set to high for 100, 
and low for, for 70. And then servo travels 100. And then over here, you can see where they make their recommendation for high rate, they want you to have a 10% expo. So they're suggesting a pretty small amount of expo. I am going to reject their theory and go into my dual rates and expo. I'm gonna first assign it to F for each of the three so that they're all tied together. So it's F, okay. Then I'm gonna set it to, if they're really saying 10, that's pretty low. So I'll do five, 10, and then 20 with 90%, okay? Elevator, I'll do for five, 10, or 20 with dual rates down to 90. And then ailerons in the lowest would be 10, then 15, you know what? How about we do? We'll do 90. And then in the middle setting, I'm going to set that to 10, just like the instructions say. And then I'll set this to 5. Now, what we can do is we can actually increase that setting after our first flight. We'll see how it flies. We'll get a feel for it and then we'll make our changes as needed. Not a lot of rudder throw, but that's okay on a jet. You don't need usually a lot of rudder throw because they're moving fast. And uh, many times you find that you want it to be a little bit less responsive than I would normally set them up. So we're basically done with the setup. Expo set, save select set. Uh, everything is set with the exception of physically getting this to close. And to be honest with you, it's just a matter of throwing some zip ties. So what we'll do is we'll pause it and then we'll give you guys a final shot here in a few minutes. All right guys, so we've got the battery pack in and we were just marking the CG. It said the manual inconsistently indicates the center of gravity. So basically they're saying you have to go from the wing root 80 to 90 millimeters back. So you just take your ruler. In my case, I have inches marked on one side and then millimeters marked on the other side. And so, can you come over here so you can see? Yeah. I'm going to the wing root. Even if it's on the inches side, it doesn't matter. It's going to be consistent on the other side. And then I just basically measure to the 8 and the 9, and I mark it. And I just go out far enough for the ruler. And then I do the same thing over here. It's very simple. And then I go out for the 8 and the 9. Okay? So I've got those two little black marks there. So what I'm going to do now is I'll take a piece of tape and I'm going to apply it carefully. So that means wherever my fingerprints are, I'm going to cut that off. And then I'm going to cut off the other side. And then this is going to get applied right on top of my markings. This is one way of doing it that I found that works pretty good. So oh, just so they don't come off. Well, it's not actually got anything to do with the mark. It's actually got to do with, I'm going to put a drip of glue in the middle. Okay. Mm. And in this case, I'm, I'm just going to use a drip of hot glue because that's what I have there. Um, CA also works really nice. Actually, CA is probably what I'm going to use. So I think for now we'll probably start with two drips of hot glue because then it'll be easier to take it off later. Uh, my hot glue's been unplugged for a minute, so it should be a little bit cooler. And so just come and watch what I'm gonna do here. Mm -hmm. I just pull the trigger and just get a little drip of it started. And then I'll just do just a super small amount. And then I'll just come back and do another super small amount. Then I'll lick my thumb and just touch it, okay? So then I'll, I'll be able to feel that. Remember this stuff's kind of kind of cooled down a little bit by 30 seconds to a minute of being unplugged. 
Okay. And then once you once you do that, then we can go ahead and flip the plane upside down and test our CG. And the rationale behind the piece of clear tape is that it will allow me to get that off without taking off the finish. So it's important if you want to try to keep the finish in good shape. If you don't care about the finish, then it's not really that critical. So now you can uh, you can either tape over that again if you want to preserve it, or you can just leave it. I'm going to leave it because that's temporary. And once I figure out whether it runs toward the nose heavy or the tail heavy side, then I can adjust from there accordingly. And this is measured with the gear down. So now I can feel that like with my middle fingers on my hands. Mm -hmm. And so if I hold on the front one, it's pretty nose heavy. And if I hold on the back one, it's a lot nose heavy. That's good because you'll notice this pucker here in the canopy. Can you see that mm -hmm. pucker? Yep. That's because the battery pack is pushed all the way forward. And what's going to happen is when I move this back, I got my voltage alarm in there just like I will in real life for regular everyday flying. So if I slide that back a pretty good deal, I just kind of have these connectors so that they're similar to where they would be. Oh, and then also we need to show you what we did in here. We straightened up all this wiring, and then I just picked up a couple of points and I tacked it in. And if you can get that nice, it will pay dividends. And then once we get this situated, then I can mark a line. So just kind of approximate where those cables are going to be so that you, I mean, you got to remember these cables are pretty heavy. They're one of the heaviest things in the plane. So... If you haven't situated them properly, uh, the pucker is a little bit better. That's good. Okay, so now we'll just try this again. Make sure your canopy's latched. Okay, we're on the back hole, tail heavy, or excuse me, nose heavy, and on the front hole, nose heavy still. Okay, so now there's another trick if you start getting a situation where you're starting to run in all your wiring and everything, which I'm getting close to doing that. I can tell it made a big improvement what I did. You gotta have room for those wires to get out, right? Well, one thing you can do is you can actually take and run your batteries to the front of the aircraft. It doesn't always work that way, but that's what I'm gonna try next. So sometimes you have to do it like this. And jets are always kind of annoying because the EDF balances the plane in a funny way sometimes. And so they always want to tip over to the back. So I'm going to loosen this strap, give myself a little bit of leeway here. And then this can be pushed. You see what's the vulnerability there, guys? See that antenna there? Spectrum, come on, seriously. You see where the antenna is? Mm -hmm. So that means I'm going to have to figure something out there. But like I was saying, this wire is quite heavy. So what I'll do is I'll just, for the sake of kind of figuring this out for tonight, I'm just going to tuck this in sideways. I may trim it so that it's not a trouble, trouble point when I'm out trying to fly. But you can see we'll be able to easily reach that now. Mm -hmm. But we need to make sure that it stays put. And we need to make sure that the canopy can be attached. So in this case, I'm going to actually go ahead and fire up the radio system. So we've got the radio on, throttle cuts on. Big spark. Seems like it goes on forever. Mm -hmm. So if that's where you end up doing it, you can tell that it's going to be a problem because mm -hmm. it's not going to tolerate that very well with that much wire. So I'll have to probably make some adjustments to make that wire work if we go that route. Better to find out now than the first day you go out to the field because you're going to be fighting it when you're out in the field. I'd rather fight it in the comfort of my own home. Um, but the other thing is, you see how this tray lifts up like this? 
And this is really what ticks me off is that stupid an antenna that exits from the case there. Here now all of a sudden we've got an antenna that needs to be relieved to go down there or protected somehow, which I have no freaking clue how I'm going to do that yet. So that basically ties me to putting this battery this way or the other way, the other um, 180 degrees off of that. Okay, so that's back pretty far. It's like as far as I can get it. And then of course we'll have to take and make a, a foam block or something that'll that'll block in here, but it won't stop all the airflow from going through because you do need a pretty good pretty good amount of airflow to cool stuff down in an EDF. Plus you'll starve it for, for air as well. Okay, so throttle cuts on. I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it in rather than trying to simulate where everything's gonna sit. Jeez. That's crazy. Yeah. just slightly in front of it. I'd be at like 78 millimeters instead of 80. Um, so the only thing I could think is to basically like take your voltage alarm, take your wire, whatever you can fit, you would basically slip this back here and that'll actually give you a little fine tune adjustment for the CG. Surprisingly, it'll make a, a pretty big difference because that's heavy stuff. And then you slip that back there. And of course, you got to make sure that, that the battery is ultimately back as far as it can be without damaging your antenna. CG is very important, guys. If you don't get the CG right, your plane's going to perform poorly. Although a nose heavy jet would probably be not the end of the world. Okay, a little bit of improvement. So I kind of hate the idea of having to add tail weight, though, on a an airplane like this, a performance airplane. So now I just need to figure out, do just a little bit more pushing back. I think we're okay to push it back just a hair more. I think we're okay. Cause I can see the battery is a little bit more rounded on the front of this battery pack. So now when I stuff something in, in here, I just need to make sure that it's quite light mm -hmm. so that yeah. it doesn't slip forward. Seems like battery placement is always a thing. Um, you mean it's not always a thing? Like when you, the first time it's sometimes it's tricky. It's, sometimes it's a pain in the butt, sometimes it's not a pain in the butt. In this case, it's kind of funny, sometimes you'll be, it feels like you're way off and then you move it just a hair and it's like a huge improvement. But like in this case, I'm in front of the CG by probably three millimeters. That's pretty tail heavy. So that means that my elevator is going to be ineffective. It'll probably fly really rock solid, but it'll be overstable. Like if I'm flying really fast, it'll be fine. But when I'm flying slow speed, then it'll just want to be wonky. And I won't have enough input to get my elevator to work properly. So if I lift up the nose of the battery, I can push it back a little bit further yet. See how I just lifted it up? So what I would have to do is I'd have to put a wedge, uh, like a wedge up underneath the, the end of the battery here, which allows me to get it back even further yet. Okay, so that'd be like right on the 80 millimeters. That would be the edge of what you want. You don't want to go any worse than that. So really, if you pick up the battery, you know, like the way I situated the wires and stuff, this is where it's tough because you, you know, you don't really know until you know. And so really, what needs to happen is the battery needs to be pushed back as far as possible for me to even have a starting point for the CG. And so what I'll do is I'll actually go ahead and just 
make a quick strike across here and just say 4,000 milliamp hours. 4,000 milliamp hours. Oops. And it didn't mark very good because it's plywood. So that's where it would go. Unless I add some nose or some, some tail weight or even some weight back here. You, you really kind of want to have as little amount of weight and as far back as you can. But you can't put it in the jet duct because it will cause problems. It'll cause extra drag on that air. So now we're at the front, the front mark, and we're just nose, nose down attitude. If we're at the back, we're pretty nose heavy. So at 90 millimeters, it's a problem. At 80, we're pretty much where we want to be. So all right, guys, um, that's about it for tonight. As you can see, this thing is a beauty. Um, I just really, I can't wait to show you what it looks like in the air. I can't wait to see what it's gonna look like in the air. You can copy my whole radio setup. Um, I'm sure it'll work similarly to Horizon's setup. And uh, all I can say is we are hoping for good weather tomorrow. That's why we're up late doing this today. So, but for now, look at that. That's so cool. Guys, look at the flaps. Big, huge flaps. Landing gear. That's gonna look so cool. Coming down the runway. Gear down. Flaps up. Flying around on final. Coming in a steep approach. Out of the flaps for your high speed pass. That's gonna be so cool. All right guys, check the link in the description below. Uh, there's a bunch of them, and including this one right now, it's a bind and fly is what we reviewed, but the plug and fly is the only thing I can find links to uh, because all the bind and flies are sold out this second, but uh, they should be getting another shipment here pretty quick. And I mean, so far, I'm really impressed with the quality of build, very high quality. Um, jets are always a little bit finicky on the battery, so that's nothing new. The wiring, there's a lot of wiring on this because there's a lot of features on it. So, and if there weren't features on it, you know, I'd be putting them in there myself. So, but for now, thanks a lot for watching. Come back for more. Don't forget to like and subscribe.